Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence. Remember? M. Francis McCarthy, and pardon me as I reach for a book here. Um, welcome as well to Day 25 of the Past Masters series. The painting I'm bringing you today is a study after George Ness, and his painting was called Sunset in the Old Orchard. And uh, my study is a 7x10. I don't know what size his original was. Much bigger, you can be sure of that. <clears throat> so, a little history on this one. Um, I've been aware of this image for a long, long time. And um, I kept hoping to find a larger bit of reference for it. What I had for it is like, I don't know, 500 pixels by, that was the width, so not by, by much, but as I stated before on this channel here, um, that's not such a big deal when it comes to doing paintings, actually. Don't, don't hesitate to use really low resolution reference because the idea isn't to get a bunch of detail across anyway with this sort of thing. Most of the what's perceived as detail is actually just implied detail. Or more accurately, uh, referred to as the impression of detail. But we don't want to get mixed up because if we call this impressionism, um, then uh, we'll get confused. What's impressionism? And <laughs> <laughs> What's tonalism? And if you're sensing <laughs> that I'm being a little sarcastic here, you're, you're right. I, I actually resent the fact that Impressionism was co-opted by the movement that um, is now labeled as Impressionism. Uh, especially in the case of uh, someone like George Ness. There's quite a few books on American Impressionism where you'll see George Ness mentioned. And... Uh, Anyway, so there you go. Now, um, if you haven't clicked like yet, please do. Please smash that like button. If I'm getting a hundred something views, that should mean I'm getting a hundred something likes because it's an awesome painting. Come on, you guys, get with it. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel um, and you like this kind of thing, please do. And when you do, uh, if you click that little bell icon next to the uh, subscribe button, then YouTube will hassle you every time I put a video out. Now, I had a, um, a flurry of activity last week. I'm putting things in the store. Um, I put the last Past Master Study up in the store. I'm going to put this one up in the store as well. And... Um, I'm actually thinking of pricing it pretty fairly. I'd like this to go go into someone's house. I've got a lot of paintings sitting around. I sell a lot of paintings, but I got a lot of paintings sitting around. Especially for a long time, I was hoarding these past masters. I don't know why. I've got too many of them around, so I'm going to start moving things in the store. And of course, it's easy for me to do that when the video is fresh, right? So I can pop the video in the store as well. Now I'm sort of leafing through a book I have on George and S right now. Oh, so, you know, check out the store. Uh, I'll get it in there. I don't know. I'll try and do it tonight. I'm going to try and and merge that up. Um, also, I don't know if I'll be doing daily videos, but you can expect to see more videos from me. Um, and especially in the case of, like, um, I have a lot of really awesome redos and things that, uh, yeah, I want to I want to put them in the store. I want to. I want them to all find lovely homes, um, you know, a nice little spot by a desk or by a lamp. You could have your own little glowing chunk of Impressionism in your home. Anyway, leafing through a book right now. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. <coughs> Gosh, there's some paintings in here. I've never actually, I mean, I've seen them because I, <laughs> I own the book. Um... This book isn't so great either. It's like one of these old, like, 70s books. Let's see when this thing was printed. 77, paperback edition. 77, 1998. Okay, so they reprinted it in 1998, but 
There, I don't know if you've, well, if you're into art, you've, you already know this, like, art books are so much better than they used to be. The, um, the level of, of fidelity and the color reproductions we get now is is just so much better. But um, the pictures in this book I'm looking at seem a little flat. The color seems a little flat, a little lacking in that glow. This is called Landscapes, and that's Landscapes by Alfred Werner and... I was thinking, well, you know, you'd probably get tired of hearing it from me, so, uh, or maybe not. Let's hope not. Um, oh, maybe before I get into that, I'll talk a little bit about this. So, really small reference, but, uh, I'm so proud and pleased to bring you this painting today because it just looks, it just looks wonderful in my studio. I just love it. I feel so pleased with, uh, the the result I got and uh, I was really even getting excited when I first started painting it I was like oh this is gonna work you know that's great when the painting goes like that sometimes it's a lot more struggle but uh, this wasn't this was really easy and one, one of the things I love about this and I really want to try and incorporate more of this into my own work is that um, first of all notice how all the tree masses uh, close off the top of the painting that's brilliant I think that works so well also um, it, it's really deceptively simple composition it's like you look at it and you go well there's not much going on here but it just is super effective and uh, I love it and I absolutely love this little painting this little study it looks great when you pop it in a little frame and uh, which I like to do in my um, drawing area I have a bunch of uh, like studio frames so um, not usually, I don't usually pop them in the gold leaf anymore, but um, I have a nice little, like, um, it's like an Italian imported uh, molding. Um, it's basically a dark frame. It looks good. I pop that on there because um, I really like to evaluate my work in a frame prior to finishing it. it you'd be surprised how that can help you. So maybe let's tip, t tip into this book. So, what else do I have to say? Um, sort of a limited palette. Um, this is a place too, you'll see, I'll be getting in some glazing a little bit. It's like I've, I'm shooting for his tones, but a lot of his tones were arrived at through um, layers of glazing. So I'll be doing a bit more glazing myself. In fact, I'm wrangling with one, a master study I have in the studio, and I painted the whole thing too dark. And um, I want to glaze it, but it's already too dark, so... I'm going to maybe have to do three passes on that one. I'm going to have to paint it up a little lighter. It's dry. The first color pass is dry. Um, it's a really awesome painting by a painter I'm not really familiar with. In fact, so much so I can't even tell you his name right now. But um, just a word to the wise there, a big tip. If you're going to glaze, you've got to paint things lighter. Glazing, even glazing with transparent uh, like earth yellow or something it has a darkening effect on your painting you'd be surprised how much so it's pretty radical anyway we'll be doing a little glazing on this in a minute you just stay tuned there so uh, let's just jump in here to uh, oh final years that's what pardon me that's still very polony out here um, yeah because I was thinking well I'd like to talk about his final years this feels like one of his later paintings and, and this was great all the way through but his later work was transcendently great um, the good later work some of it wasn't good but he was always trying and he was always experimenting and um, of course experimenting within the range of what he was after he wasn't just doing crazy things like like cubism um, ooh Let's see, his memory was a storehouse of places and things which he had studied in the early days. That he, So much so that he drew on it and painted a truth laid away in his memory and an actual scene. So this might, might just be all from memory here. Once and as even went so far as to assert the subject is nothing as he casually changed a seascape into a landscape. Yet this bold statement must not mislead us into thinking that he indulged in speculations paralleling those of 20th century abstract painters. Whenever he used his brush and his thumb, he gave us renderings of land, sea, and sky 
from placid village scenes to stormy oceans and from northern vegetation of New England to the almost tropical flora of the Gulf of Mexico coast. There is a good deal of repetition but there is no monotony as from the same subject matter and this could always derive a different visual experience and I'm very much into this personally sorry to to exit the uh, the quotation I'm reading here from the book I'm very much into that um, there's a lot of similarity but uh, not really monotony and I love to paint the same scene uh, repeatedly I find it's so powerful because it really yeah, I'll never I can't duplicate any painting I've ever done you know even even if I was to try and set out to do that I just you know some people think I'm I'm nothing but consistent and I am very consistent but uh, you go back to some of my older videos in this channel even my older studies of Vaness and stuff I see I'm doing some glazing there yeah and the um, actually when it comes to the glazing to get the sort of uh, effects with the blues that he would get um, you have to glaze yeah and I remember when I was doing this I'm thinking well I kind of have that blue a little too dark I should have painted it up lighter so you see what I'm doing now is scumbling in a bit of a yellowish kind of hazy and um, ended up working fine it ended up working good so no complaints there anyway back to our book so you're looking at my second color pass right now and uh, because I was glazing with yellows and things you'll see I have to restate some of the darks and, uh, and what have you anyway back to this book by old uh, what's his name here Alfred Werner and that's landscapes you can get this book for cheap by the way it's worth it if you can pick it up for eight bucks you know it's the kind of book I think it's part of a set it's like this square sort of format there was probably another one with you know some other American painters or what have you um, anyway and I'm on I'm reading from page 18 um, because the whole book is full of color plates and there's a little blurb about each painting there which is a nice a nice approach uh, there are of course subjects that occur only once like Lacuna Valley which is a commission piece or the pines and the olives on the whole, however, and this is au revoir, consisted of variations on a limited number of themes. Same with me, same with me. Often with a stronger emphasis on the power of expression than on the precision of topological reality. That's me too. And this is one reason why I love to make an S studies because he was so good at doing so many things that I want to accomplish with my own painting. Um, it's not even funny. Ines Murphy Eaton. Ines never painted portraits, and this is rare in an artist, did not leave a single self portrait. Only once did he paint a mythological scene, Diana surprised by some Greek name, which is now lost. He deliberately confined himself to a few motifs river streams, a rippling brook, the hillside, the sea, the clouds, to use his own listing. Huh. Yeah, I relate. Who knows? Maybe it was a nest in a past life. I totally relate to this guy. He was a bit fevered, though. Actually, I think he was even an epileptic. So, uh, I'm not fevered. I'm not an epileptic. I have a lot of uh, internal drive and energy. I'm very passionate about uh, not just landscape painting, but about my music and stuff as well. So. Anyway, we're kind of getting close to the end here. Thank you for joining me today. And, uh, yeah, you got any questions? You can shoot me an email or you can ask me a question in the comments. I don't mind questions about technique or even questions about the colors I use. There is a video that covers my uh, texturizing of my boards um, and my palette. So to, to get to those, you would just do, uh, <clears throat> go to my channel. And there's a little search area just type in palette or type in board those are uh, two big uh, two big things that would help you kind of get my sort of results that and doing a, a thousand paintings or so and you'll be <laughs> you'll be on your way no problem yeah just uh, just look at that palette video, look at the texturizing video, and then do a thousand.
<laughs> a thousand paintings and uh, you too can pull off uh, remarkable in this study anyway thanks for joining me today I'll be back real soon with another video and uh, I'll probably be I don't know I don't know if it'll be tomorrow or the next day something like that it'll be happening anyway until that time please do me a favor take good care of yourself and your loved ones and stay out of trouble <laughs>